welcome to another insightful episode of Intellect, Youth with a Nation at Heart. My name is Daniel Adaja. They say when you give the person the right shoes, that shoe will take them to the right place. Today on Intellect, we're talking about the shoemaking industry and we had to travel to the big city of Ibadan, the biggest in West Africa, to talk about the shoemaking industry. I seated right before me is the CEO of Itele Footwears. Good day, sir. Good day to you, too. Thank you very much for having us here. You're today. welcome. This is an amazing collection. Thank you, thank you. All right, can we get to know you, sir? My name is Shay David, and um, I'm the CEO of Itele Footwear. Um, I'm a shoemaker and also an entrepreneur. Um, I live here in Ibadan. I run the business right here in Ibadan. But then we deliver worldwide. I mean worldwide. We deliver across the whole world. I tell you, across the whole world we deliver. So tell us, how exactly did you um, get into the business of shoemaking? I started way back when I was very, very young. I loved to play around shoes, you know. I convert um, shoes to sandals, you know. All the whole shoes in the house, I spice it up and make them new and something that um, you can wear again. So that was how I, I really um, thought of um, making a brand new one then, but I was still in school then, so I can't really run it as a business. All I do then is make sandal for myself, my brothers, and um, my friends then. So what are some of the challenges that you have faced in your business? What are the things that uh, your business has experienced? Now, when you started the business, and even now that you have expanded and the business is growing, what are the challenges that you are still facing in the business? Well, basically, at first, um, there is um, the issue of acceptance you get. You know, um, it took a while before people um, get to accept the product, you understand. There is this doubt in people that, okay, yes, it looks nice, but then it's made from here. They, they don't see that um, anything good can actually come out of this part of the world. You said, even we that we're living in this part of the world thing. You understand? So it was really um, a big issue then. But after a while, you know, we have to um, make sure that some people are test run, you understand, give samples. And that was how um, we were able to deal with that. People start referring, you understand. And once they see that, okay, this product is tested and it's okay, that's how we um, were able to overcome the um, issue of um, acceptance, you understand. So what exactly can government do to actually help your business? Or do you think that there are policies that the government can implement or things that the government can do that would help shoemaking business in Nigeria to thrive? Well, there are so many things the um, government can do. The number one thing is infrastructure. You get, see, the thing is, we run um, a manufacturing company. We can't do without light. If there is light, I tell you, the expense, the, um, the money we spend on um, fuel, on diesel, will come down. Now for young entrepreneurs who are trying to get into the business, what exactly can they do? What are your words of advice that they need to actually be able to start up right? Right now, well, um, first they need to identify their market, you know, and know who you want to sell to and where they are. When you do that, you're good to go. Then you have to um, understand that quality control is very, very, very important. You, get, you have to put that in check. You spoke about the internet. Now let's talk about how uh, the internet has affected your business. Would you say it's, uh, it's very um, important for you to involve the use of internet in your business? Well, I think, I think anybody that is running a business now and is not um, um, maximizing the um, impact of social media is would soon go out of business. Yeah, Big Gate once said that long ago. You understand? The thing is, it is it is very very important for us to understand why. Now, this is a physical store. It's not easy for you to come from Lagos and come and buy here. But then you can do that online. With the help of social media, you see what you want, you see the video, you see the pictures, you understand, except for the quality. And there is a return policy that we put in place. Okay. So if you don't like, you can return it. So. Money refundable. But then people hardly do that because when they get it, they get the quality. They're always like, wow. You understand? You're able to reach more people. You understand? It is very important for you because if you really want your business to grow, 
you have to you have to have the social media presence now for young entrepreneurs who are trying to get into the business what exactly can they do what are your words of advice that they need to actually be able to start up right you have to put god first for direction and hope then second is your circle you really have to surround yourself with people of great intellect people that even if they are not successful now you know that they have potentials they have prospects not people that will weigh you down patience is very very important you understand you need to trust the process a lot of us want to be like dangote now a lot of us want to be like and that has given us unnecessary pressure do you have the funds that dangote had when he wanted to start his business are you as old as dangote are you as knowledgeable as dangote no but then you want to become overnight success like dangote no it doesn't work like that you have to be very 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 patient thank you very much for having us here today remember for more information you can log on to our website www.intellect.com.ng don't forget to follow the conversation on our instagram and twitter platform at intellectng thank you very much hi people it's another welcome to another segment of the intellect tv show youths that have the nation at heart my name is Oye Busimilian, your host and today we'll be talking about something that affects us all as young people and we'll be talking about um, skilled labor and the nigerian youth so today on the show i have three amazing young people and um with me these three people will be analyzing and discussing like we do normally on the show so without um stressing much i would like to start from the young man putting on the same t-shirt with me. What's your name? Hi, my name is Adegoki Ayobami. Adegoki Ayobami. How are you doing today? Very well. And the beautiful lady? I'm Bukola Balogo. Bukola Balogo. I love your dress. And finally to you? I'm Godwin Ochefio. God, Godwin Ochefio. So how are we all doing today? We are good. Okay. Um, did we enjoy the interview we just watched? Um, the interview with the CEO of Italia Footwear, Mr. Shay David. Did we enjoy it? Yes, okay. it was awesome. Uh, was the story quite inspirational? Because it was for me. Yes, it was actually inspirational. Okay. As I the fact it was inspirational, like we do normally, I want to hear your own opinion about the interview we just watched. So, Pukola, over to you. Okay, um, I think you stressed on the fact that the uh, process is very key. Okay. You mentioned the fact that uh, while growing up, things were not so interesting, so you had to figure out what to do. Okay. Now, um, you figured out there's a new problem there, and then you work on the new, and uh, prefer solution. And not just that, he applied excellence in what he was doing. From the inception of um, the idea of him creating this business, he already had a vision of mm -hmm. how he wants the business to be in the future and then because of that he created his unique brand of his own business and the interesting thing that I noticed after watching the interview is that he was always emphasizing on the fact that he stuck to his brand he didn't compromise in anything the quality he was always making sure that he had this good quality of his product I had learned a lot from the young man and one of the things I learned from him was that his spirit to never give up. Like starting, starting for him was not easy. If we if we listen to his story, where well, didn't start well. Like he had a lot of issues starting up. People were not supporting him, but he never gave up. Like he kept on pursuing his dream because he had the passion for for what he was doing. Nigerian youth and skilled labor. What's the first thing that comes to my mind, Godwin? Uh, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is uniqueness. Okay. The reason why I will say it is, the truth is, there are opportunities in Nigeria when it comes to this skilled labor, I'll use um, one of my experiences to just paint a picture. So after I graduated from the university, I'd already saved up some money. And then I invested this. My sister used to buy shoes from Naraguta. It's, it's a place in Jos where they make shoes with ties and skin. So what she does then was, she would buy these shoes in wholesale from Naraguta, bring them down to Lagos here and then sell them in retail sales. She, she made a lot of profit. I saw the business there and I invested in it. Now, the interesting part about this story is 
We named this shoe Ghana shoe. That's Ghana slippers. But the truth was, it was made in Nigeria. The material and the guys that were making it were in. Everything was done in Nigeria. In Nigeria. So the thing is, I just had this thought that why did we even name it Ghana shoe? Is it that the guys there, they don't want to have a brand for themselves? Because to me, I saw that shoe as a very unique shoe. But then it, it really didn't have any sign in it. So who named it Ghana shoe? We, we just named it Ghana shoe because it, it actually didn't have any shoe. And if you put it in a shop, nobody, as in they'll just see it as a normal slipper that, they, um, that a random shoe maker made. Okay. And the truth was, it was looking like a normal shoe that a random shoe maker made. So from your own perspective, how do you think that name branding can help promote growth that's growth in skilled labor okay. in our country okay so um i think basically in set uh, in setting up a business uh, okay. in planning the structure and all of that from scratch now names are catchy if you don't actually give a name that is going to appeal to people's hearing and uh, yes their hearing if it doesn't appeal to their hearing the truth is it's just going to be in the store and that's what it's going to be now before people get to see they get to hear yeah, sure. People get to hear first of all. What they want to buy. Yeah. What they want to buy. Yeah. yeah. So most of the time, all oh, these persons get the slippers and can easily tell you, oh, I, I saw the slippers and this is the name of the slippers. Now, if it's catchy and it's short, people can easily relate to it. Oh, a friend of mine told me about the slippers. A friend of mine told me about the shoe. This is the name of the brand. It's easy for you to locate and it's easy for you to find. So first of all, the name is really very important. Now branding, branding is something that also attracts. In as much as what you hear matters, what you see too matters. If the packaging of um, if the packaging of something isn't so attractive, you won't go for it. So these two are very important. The name and the branding is really very important for a business. Okay, so Ayumami, do you think people or we citizens we are not quick to buy our own made items? Yeah, I would say um, we are not we don't really like to buy our own made items because of some reasons because we feel they are not up to standard and like we, like my colleague said also because of the name we give to some of these things and the branding we give to some of these things because basically we nigerians we are very good with what we do we are very good and we think but basically our branding is not really always up to standard, standard. and we don't really we don't really pay attention to the standard of what we want to sell like we just feel okay let me just make something substandard something people can just use for a little while and, it's, well. and okay. it's just fade off but people want to buy something that they that, that can last for a, for, a, for a long time for that they can time. use for a while okay these are things that really affect okay. what we okay so to you you feel that we are more comfortable buying imported things yes we are more co comfortable buying imported Important. things if you look around us you see that the number of unemployed people keeps rising day by day so how do you think the government can come in to make sure that or to make sure that skilled labor should be um appreciated by everybody so it's no longer like change the mindset to an extent that when someone hears skilled labor the person doesn't be like please i'm a graduate i don't think i can do something like that no i that thank you for that question um one way that the government can try to work in that area is by creating an enabling environment for businesses in that area. Now, just um, looking at this thing, most of these skilled laborers, they are not, they are, okay, we just look at them in this our own demographic, that's Nigeria now, as like a layman's work. These are jobs that people outside Nigeria use to create like a large source of wealth. And people in Nigeria now, I can also say due to experiences, they just feel people that are in that area are just these menial people. So what do you think hinders progress of skilled labor in Nigeria? So basically, like you said earlier, power is actually the major problem in Nigeria for any skilled labor. Because without power, anything you do will soon go well. Because oh, power wow. is actually the reason why um, most um, skilled labor in Nigeria is not working right so, now. Okay. Because you, we have to leverage most times on on um, generators or solar power, which which were, have been done generated by ourselves. So I feel the government need to do more for us. We need to provide power for for us to be able to work more, to be able to 
to to to discover things by ourselves because before you even go, want to learn something else you are you are down so i feel another thing is that the mindset of of the youth okay. because yes of the of the youth we believe this this job this labor is done by illiterate and the, the earlier we change it the better for us because for example a mechanic now once you say okay once you go to a mechanic you believe his name must be kabiru or rabiu so or Pascal. something that has to be. <laughs> no, no, so, we believe, so we believe it's actually for the lead illiterate so we don't want to believe that the literate can actually be a mechanic we as nigerian youth we need to put more we need to put more effort in in, in skilled labor. Okay, so um, because I'm going to be asking you, you made mention about having to bring in expatriates to come and do some skilled labor. And I know that there's this particular brand of vehicle that is made here in Nigeria, but hardly would you see top government officials driving this vehicle? Hardly would you see it even being promoted? So what's your view about governments having to support our own made items there's just one person that I would say, after so much struggle, is been recognized in Nigeria. Because I actually got to know about this same person recently. Okay. Now we have an economy that is not really supporting young people. Okay. Now when you when you when you talk about um, you know organizations that have some of these um, that have some of these different mm -hmm. let me put it different, different and unique kind of businesses just like assembling a vehicle, it's not everybody that really dabbles into that. Now, we have the issue of VAT that has just been increased recently. And the truth is, this is going to affect the common man on the streets the most. Oh, okay. So if the economy isn't balanced enough for people to actually thrive in their businesses, definitely you get to see that people get to turn off or um, it becomes difficult for them to be able to Sorry thrive. Sorry to cut you could you please tell our audience at home the meaning of VAT? Okay, VAT is value added tax. Now, this is a form of tax that is imposed or that is brought out of almost everything that we get to buy. Now, we might not feel it directly like, oh, okay, we're paying this tax, but everything we buy, now there's going to be inflation based on this. The biscuit we used to buy 10 naira can be increased to 15 naira because of this. When there's an economy that is favorable, I feel, or I believe, so many youth will look inward into doing, uh, you know, what is. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's a saying that there's dignity in labor. Dignity they will begin to see that. Yeah. We'll have to face this truth that, okay, the government now, if you study hard and you do your research, you would see that there are actually policies that they are put in place to favor some of these people. But then, in this government, politics play itself. Now, given an instance, I am a minister, and then I am, I have, like, majority of my family members we are into the business of importing cars. And I am sitting on a table. That I have a seat in the Senate. If they bring a bill stating that the car yes, car importation, because we have a guy that I would always say no. Yes. That, is, that is the mentality the that mentality. most politicians have. Because I have read into this, and I have seen that there are policies that the government have put to help cars. That's at least assembling of cars in Nigeria, making it cheaper than the ones That's that That's an instance imported. in one of the skilled yes, labor you're giving now. Just one instance. But then, even with this case, you will still see people that are having political power trying to hinder other people that are trying to make this business thrive right. in Nigeria. So I see it as a very big challenge. So before we round off, we'll be watching an interview with a young Nigerian who is into nail fixing, you know, artificial nails, and in Wuse markets, that's in Abuja. My name is um, Abba Ferdinand Uchenna. I am a graduate of University of Science and Technology, Enugu. I study psychology. After serving um, since two years ago, I have been searching for a job, but couldn't find one. When I saw the opportunity of fixing of nail and making pedicure, manicure, I have to grab the opportunity because I have searched for a job for a quite long of time. So I have to take the opportunity. But the money I'm making in the work for now is just to be sustaining myself. So if the government can provide works for the uh, graduates of this, our country, it will be very nice. So to you now, Nigerian youths are not lazy, right? Yeah, sure. Um, as you can see, um, I have things that I'm doing there and people are there. I can 
I've experienced young youths trying to make it survive. Yeah. How, how hard has it been to survive? Yeah, it has not been easy for me, but uh, we bless God. We bless God, we, we do our own and leave the rest for God. But I, I will advise the, the, the country to help the youths in job providing. Why I am doing this work now is just to be sustaining myself, to have money to get myself what I want to get for myself. It hasn't been easy in the streets, but I had no option because I have searched for a job and I have no option than to take this very one. Welcome back, guys. I'm sure we learned a lot. And from what we saw, it seems like most people are now beginning to go into skilled labor. Probably there are no jobs as a way of survival. But whatever it is um, prompts you to go into a particular skilled labor or what motivates you, it's fine, but just ensure you don't strive, you, like you don't leave the part of having to fulfill that quest of providing answers to a particular target audience, okay? So guys, I hope I didn't say something I wasn't supposed to say. I hope I said your mind. Yeah, spot on, yeah. Okay, no problem. Well, okay, no problem. problem. Yes, and I'm sure we all learned. Is that correct? Yes. And it was a wonderful session. For me, I learned a lot and I really enjoyed myself. I had fun and I was learning also. So from here, us here at the studio, we'll be wrapping it up. And you'd agree with me that Nigerian youth are not lazy, are we? No, no. no we are hustlers. Yeah. Irrespective of what's happening, we're still trying to make sure that both ends meet. So do not forget you're still watching The Intellectual, Youths with the Nation at Heart. Do have a good day. Hello, welcome to Business Quest. My name is God Queen Aniki. How would you feel to wake up every day and go do what you love doing, like what you have passion for, and make money from it? Like your work, what you have interest in, and you make money every day from it. Hmm, that is less stressful, enjoyable, and very comfortable. Walt Disney was an animator, an American entrepreneur, and a film producer. He has so much passion for drawing. He took art classes, grew so much interest in it, and started his Disney studio. Now, his business expanded a lot, and up to this moment, we all know Walt Disney and all that he has done. Now, what I'm trying to tell everybody is, you have to understand what you have interest in, what you have passion for, put so much effort in it, and try to make money from it. So I urge you to recognize your interest, be creative about it, be very passionate about it, and you will end up being a long time success story. Thank you very much for being with us today. For more information, visit all our social media platforms. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.